Hello, math class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson three, uh, titled Scale Diagrams, lesson three of the eighth unit. Uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit from specific rates to scale diagrams. Uh, we are going to essentially take diagrams where we've taken measurements, but maybe uh, each side isn't exactly the length that it should be in the picture. And we're going to draw specific uh, measurements that are actually proportional uh, to the real measurement. So a scale diagram is a drawing in which measurements are proportionally reduced or enlarged from actual measurements. So the scale diagram is similar to the original. A similar shape has proportional sides and angles and everything like that. Uh, scale, uh, the ratio of a measurement on a diagram to the corresponding distance measured on the shape or object represented by the diagram. So essentially, how much larger or how much smaller is this object? Uh, sometimes when we're looking through a microscope, we're going to be able to scale it up a hundred times or, um, you know, you might want to make something smaller if you're drawing a diagram of a building like a blueprint. So let's get into the first example. This one's going to take a little bit of time. It is, um, we're actually going to draw a proportional diagram and we're going to come up with that uh, scale first. So example one, Maxine is moving into a new apartment. Before moving, she wants to decide where to place her furniture in her new living room. So when she visits, uh, she drew this rough sketch of the layout and took some measurements. She also me measured her furniture. We're going to leave her furniture measurements for a little bit, and we're going to focus on the room measurements. Uh, and we're going to look at question A here. So A is we want to determine a scale that we can use to create a scale diagram of the living room on an 8 by 5, uh, or sorry, 8.5 by 11 paper. Now we're actually gonna focus on that's a little bit smaller because uh, as you can see from your space, it is a little bit smaller than the actual page, but the way we're going to do it will work out either way. Let's get going. Um, so what we wanna do when we're talking about scale diagrams is we wanna, first of all, put it into the unit that we're going to be drawing in. And we're gonna be drawing in inches on our paper. Uh, that's what a scale that the paper gave us, eight and a half by 11. So we're going to want to turn the longest edge, at least, into a um, scale, uh, into inches. So you can see from the diagram that like, if we have 10 feet across, um, that should work. Like that's the longest wall on the other side. It looks like 12 feet total might go across, but I can use uh, the 10 feet, because if I just make sure that there's a little bit of room on each side, um, it should fit. So if I take 10 feet, I can turn that into inches by multiplying by 12 uh, to get 120 inches across. So like, let's say I scaled this down uh, by a factor of 10. So what if I said one inch, this is on paper, is equal to um, like 12 inches in real life. So if I said that, I would need to have like 10 inches across on the paper. So need 10 inches, which I definitely do not have. Uh, I couldn't turn the 10 feet into representing 10 inches because I would need more than that going across the paper. I have maximum, absolute maximum, 8.5 inches and preferably I'm gonna to want to go smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try another proportion of this. I'm gonna try instead of one inch equals 12 inches in real life. Why don't I try one inch on the paper is equal to 24 inches in real life. Essentially that will scale it down even further. 120 divided by 24, we would get, uh, we would need five inches across the paper which we have, and that is what I was aiming for because we have some room as well. So essentially the ratio or the scale that we're going to use is one to 24. One inch equals 24 inches. One inch on the paper equals 24 inches in real life. Uh, essentially what that means is I can take uh, two feet on the paper, which I guess I should have been inches up there. 
Um, we need five inches. It could take two feet. Sorry, this is the symbol for feet. And, and that would equal one inch on my paper as well. So we should be able to draw this now. Let's go. We have the top line to be 10 feet and every two feet equal, I'll write this on top again, two feet, hopefully we can fit this. I haven't done this into the actual viewing space. We'll see, two feet is equal to one inch. So let's see, we've got 10 feet across, that means it's going to be five inches across. We have this tiny ruler. Start way up at the top here. I'm gonna start right in the corner. I gotta go five inches across. So I'm going to draw my line. So that right there is five inches. And that represents 10 feet across. Let's draw this wall down here. Now, four, uh, nine feet would equal 4.5 inches. I essentially need to divide everything by two. Uh, and that's the, the number that I need to go to. So 4.5 inches, that would get me to down here. And I'll kind of be able to see if I'll be able to fit this on the screen. I think some of it's going to go off the bottom. So we'll shift it around a bit, but that's okay. Uh, we have a little jut out here that is two feet. And that two feet would equal one inch, like two divided by two is one. So I can draw a one inch wall here. I have the same thing, a two foot wall, which equals one inch. So I can go down this way, one inch. I have a space that's four feet. So that four feet is two inches. So from here to here is the space. So that's where my next wall is going to start. Oh, we can see it. Excellent news. That's where my next wall is going to start. And then eight feet, so that's four inches. Eight divided by two, go from here all the way over. We have a wall here. Now, it just gives me one measurement of that side wall. Uh, it gives me five feet. So five divided by two is two and a half. So I am going to measure two and a half inches from there. About there. And then that is going to take me down to this wall. That should be three inches. So yeah, that works. So you can see we made it, it's three inches. Now it's not a perfect diagram, but it's pretty close. Let's go and label things as I kind of forgot that. So this is 4.5 inches. This is one inch. So is this one. One inch, we have a space here that is a door that is uh, two inches. This one is four inches. I'll write that on the top so you can see it. And then this space right here is 2.5 inches. So that is the scale diagram of, uh, her, of, of the living room. I guess that was question C, so I didn't scroll down, but that's okay. We created the scale diagram of the living room. So that is what we should have there. It, um, yeah, everything is exactly proportional to the space. Every two feet in real life equals one inch on the paper. Another way we could write this is every uh, 24 inches in real life is equal to one inch on the paper. And the reason that we would do that is so we could write the ratio uh, in this way, 24 to one. Uh, we wouldn't write two to one like that as a ratio because these are in different units. So that's important. If you're ever asked to write the ratio, you want to make sure that the uh, both sides are in the same unit. Uh, writing two to one, two feet to one inch is okay for when we're actually drawing it, but it doesn't work for writing the ratio because they are not in the same unit. So the ratio here is 24 to one. Let's see what we have next. Oh yes, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of math to determine the size of uh, the furniture that she has. So 
I'm going to save this because this is beautiful. Because I'm going to save this one. Oh, I'm going to mess with my paper. There we go. So let's see. We're going to do the couch first, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, we're going to do the couch first. So we'll call it C. And we know that every 40 inches is um, going to be getting smaller. We're going to have to draw it smaller. And our scale is 24. So what we do is we take the 40 inches and we divide it by our scale of 24. We want to make it 24 times smaller, essentially. So we get 1.7 inches for one side of the couch. And for the other side of the couch, it's 90 inches. So we divide that by 24, making it 24 times smaller, just like we did with the apartment. And we get 3.75 inches. So those are the two measurements for the couch. Let's do the love seat next. The love seat has a side, again, 40 inches. So it's probably like the, the width of it, the depth, right? Away from the wall. Same as the couch. Probably got a matching set. Uh, good job, Maxine. So 40 divided by 24, we already know is 1.7 inches. And then we have the length of the love seat, which is 66. That makes sense. It's about a third of the couch. You know, two people instead of three. Everything is matching up here. And if we go 66 divided by 24, make it uh, 24 times smaller, we get 2.75 inches. Let's see, we'll do our wall unit. I assume that's where the TV goes. Otherwise, what else would you point your furniture at? Um, we take 20 for the width divided by 24 to make it 24 times smaller. It should be less than one. If you're making 20, 24 times smaller, it should be a decimal. So that's 0.8 inches. And we get 60 divided by 24. So we have 2.5 inches. Okay. You get that that says inches. I know it's a little bit hiding, but that's okay. Uh, so now what we could do is we could add it to the previous diagram. And I am going to show you how I did it to make it work. Now, uh, I didn't point the furniture at the wall unit. So um, maybe there's no TV in it. But here we go. So here's the diagram that I created earlier with five inches across, 4.5, one, one, two inch door. Uh, we have a four inch wall and a two and a half inch um, door on this side. Maybe that goes to the kitchen. Uh, but I found that the furniture was actually kind of monstrous for the size of the room. And I'm not 100% sure how realistic it truly is. Um, so anyway, we found that the love seat could go here. The couch could, you could rearrange this, I'm sure. You know, you could put the, the um, the wall unit over here with the love seat. Maybe the couch would fit over here. Uh, you could do it however you want it. But what you would want to do is make sure that this right here is 2.5 inches. You would want to make sure that this is uh, the designated amount from before. What do we calculate it to be? Length of the couch, 3.75 inches. You would want to make sure of that. Just make sure that it is all to scale. Uh, again, this furniture looks really big, it's not a lot of room. Maybe there's a coffee table in the middle as well. But um, that would be Maxine's living room. Let's go, I think we have some more problems. Okay, does it make sense that the scale factor you used for your diagram had to be less than one? Um, so when we say we're reducing something, then we are going to be uh, having a scale factor that's less than one, one divided by 24, essentially. Uh, when we're making something larger, we're going to be multiplying it by a number uh, that is larger than one to make it bigger, make the number larger overall. So uh, E, yes, to be a reduction, it has to be less than one, greater than one. If you have a number that's greater than one, it's an enlargement. So that's why we were dividing each of these by 24 to make it smaller. And if you have any questions, please, please let me know, uh, either by email or in class. Let's move on to, I think this is the last example. 
of the lesson. Let's do it right here. Let's see. Okay, so we're gonna talk about scale factor. So we're gonna talk about um, a, a concrete number that we can use to demonstrate uh, how much larger or how much smaller uh, something is than the original object. So the diameter of this animal cell is rep, uh, a, a scale diagram. It is actually 0.25 millimeters. So in actuality, in real life, actual, this is 0.25 millimeters, very small. On this diagram, you can see that it's labeled at 3.5 centimeters. So the diagram is equal to 3.5 centimeters. So that's a different unit than um, the unit that it really is measured in. Uh, the question is what scale factor was used to draw this scale diagram? So we are going to talk about in future lessons a scale factor uh, of k. So k, whenever I talk about k in this lesson, in this unit, uh, that is a scale factor. So to determine the scale factor, k, our formula is the diagram size divided by the actual size. Okay, so if we are getting smaller, this will be a smaller number. If we are drawing a larger diagram, this is going to be a number that is larger than one. Okay, so our k value for the previous would have been less than one. Let's do this one first. So the diagram, if I change this into millimeters, that's 35 millimeters divided by 0.25 millimeters. So that goes into 35 140 times. Uh, it's like multiplying 35 by 4 essentially. So K for this uh, picture, this diagram is equal to 140. Therefore, our scale factor is 140. I know you don't necessarily have a place for this in um, your booklet, but if we were to um, use our previous example, um, we would have a smaller number as, okay, so this is for the previous example. I wanna make that clear with the room. K is equal to the diagram divided by the actual. So uh, the diagram was one inch and the actual was 24 inches. So we would get a decimal a number that's less than one. I can find out what that is here. One divided by 24. Our scale factor for this one, 2.04166. But to be honest, we would probably keep it in this form because decimals are no good. Okay. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Uh, but thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys again soon.